Hello, hello, it's Scott Jonasson from Red Lake, Ontario, Canada, hauling fuel in the Great White North. You're watching Trucker Josh on YouTube. <laughs> Good morning, it's Tuesday morning. We're here in Whitewood at the Petrol Pass. I got my father-in-law here with me. Morning. Trucking together, we gotta deliver our loads together this morning. And from here, I think the plan is for us to head to Kenora, then down into Minnesota. Uh, we have to confirm that yet though. That's uh, word on the street. We got Old Blue parked right beside his unit. That's his first trip. He just started here. It's going good. Got a good teacher. <laughs> he calls me his teacher to make me feel special. This is his truck here we got. Blue. And 3088. And this is our loads. We're gonna go get this off our trailers right now. Just down the road in Langbank. Saskatchewan. He bought me a coffee. A little liquid light. Like I told you in yesterday's video, uh, father in law's name is Jerry. He uh, worked at GM in the service department for many, many years, for much longer than I've known him. And he used to be a truck driver back in the day when my wife was uh, a little girl. And uh, now he's back. <laughs> we dragged him over here and uh, He's gonna be pulling roll tights and some flatbeds. Just enjoying a little breakfast of champions here before we get rolling. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Now I work with my dad and my father-in-law. So both dads are here working with me now. My dad was the first to start here. And then I started in, uh, I think dad started here in uh, 2009. If I'm thinking right, he's been driving my whole life. He's been with a few different companies when I was younger, but he's been here uh, doing the same thing since 2009, I believe, three years before me, 9, 10, 11, no, 2008. Because I started in 2011, and now my father-in-law, Jerry, uh, he started, well, like I said, this is his first trip. He's been in uh, orientation and stuff for two weeks, and just getting familiar with everything, because when he was driving truck, e-log wasn't a thing, and everything was a lot simpler. And it's gotten a lot more complicated and confusing since then. So he's got to catch up with all the new uh, regulations and stuff. And he's doing really good, though. He calls me his teacher. Uh, he knows what he's doing. He's doing good. <laughs> the only thing I'm helping him with, really, is the the e log and stuff, because uh, nobody likes the e log. But other than that, it's been fun. Yeah. We're, we want to do this uh, Kenora trip over the border, just so that I can, you know coach him through uh, border crossings a little bit because that's changed a lot since he was driving as well. Get a little right paperwork all in order, get all your uh, you know, your ACE or your ACI manifest and your PAR sticker or your PAP stickers. Those of you who don't drive truck, that's probably all foreign language to you. It's, so it's just lots of, uh, lots of paperwork and T's to cross and I's to dot. All right, I'm gonna lead us out of the parking lot here. Had a good sleep. I'm leading us out of the parking lot. Uh, we got oh, Mr. Penner coming out behind me, and then Jerry's right behind him there. Yeah. And we literally got 10, 15 minutes down this road right here, and we'll be at our delivery. And it shouldn't take long once we're there. It's it's a lot of you saw the loads. It's a lot of uh, intricate little metal pieces. A real pain to tie down, but you know, we got her done. Nobody's coming.
both of us. It was a little bit of a rush. I should have filmed some of it. I'm sorry, guys. But took our straps off, rolled them up, and took the freight off the trailer. Now the trailer's empty, and put all of our equipment away, and now we're headed back. Might go home for supper today, but we got to be in Kenora tonight, because tomorrow morning, we're both loading a load in Kenora that's going to uh, Brainerd, Minnesota. And I'm just going to show them how border crossings work, uh, bring them up to date with things that have changed in the last little while, because, you know, they keep changing things. And we'll see where we go from there. But we only got to be there in the morning. So uh, we might both go home for supper yet and then head out to Kenora later tonight. We'll see. We're in Langbank, Saskatchewan. And that's about a five hour drive home from here. Not too far. Where we spent the night. And there's the Trans Canada. We are eastbound. Side lane. No, he's in my lane. And I don't have a on ramp here either. So I can't just cut in front of everybody. This guy's turning, and that Freightliner, or is that a Volvo or Freightliner? That's a Volvo, isn't it? Volvo. After him. stopping in uh, Brandon for coffee and then heading home for supper he lives in uh, Headingley west of Winnipeg we go through there all the time right it's right on the Trans Canada here I think he's gonna go home for supper as well have a shower at home and I'll head to my house and we'll probably meet on the east side of Winnipeg later tonight so we can continue on to Kenora hoping to be loaded first thing in the morning tomorrow so that we might even get unloaded in Brainerd tomorrow. It'll be a little tight because these uh, loads we're picking up have to be tarped. So it, and sometimes it takes a little while to get loaded there and then with the tarping added onto it, sometimes it can be uh, a whole day event, but let's hope not. Crossing border, entering Manitoba, changing time zone. It's 
stop for a break here at the Tim Hortons in Brandon, like usual. I adjusted my uh, fifth wheel a little bit uh, because a load I had a little while ago had quite a bit of overhang in the front. I slid the fifth wheel all the way to the back and forgot to move it back. It's not a big issue, but I remembered now. So I moved the fifth wheel back to the center of the rear axis. And there's the empty trailer behind me. There's Paul and Law's trailer over there. There's his truck. And we're off. We're both gonna go home for a few hours, like I said before, and then meet up on the east side of Winnipeg later this evening uh, and head into Kenora for tonight. can make it out but this car in front of me has his windows smashed out that's odd his rear window from what I could see and he's kind of driving all over the road at least he was what do you figure you think it's stolen am I the only one that went to that conclusion oh he's slowing down again we're gonna catch up to him look at that thing that thing is beat up how? How does a vehicle get that banged up? Yikes. Well, maybe it's not stolen. Maybe he just doesn't take care of his stuff. How do you break out your back window? That's an odd one. That's an odd one. That, to me, uh, speaks of... Speaks of weirdness. That, that's weird. That stinks. Stinks like weirdness. Right? So this is Headingly just up ahead here. Paul in laws behind me there. He's going to be going home, having a shower, having supper. I'm going to continue around the city, go home for supper myself, and a shower at home. We're going to meet up at 7 o'clock this evening on the other side of the city. Hopefully I'll have enough time. I mean, it's quarter to three now. I gotta stop at Flying J for fuel, can't forget. So I'll get fueled and I'll go around, get home probably around 34. It's 3.30, 4 o'clock, 4.30, maybe before 5. I'll uh, only have like an hour at home. An hour and a half, maybe. Shoot. I was hoping for a little bit more time at home, but meh. Technically, this visit to home wasn't even supposed to happen. We could have gone straight through to Kenora, but I wanted to go and spend a little bit of time at home with the wife yet, so. An hour and a half is better than nothing. A little treat midweek. Yeah, I missed you too, buddy. It's only been one day, though, man. It's only been one day. Where's Diesel? Diesel. He already said hello. Oh, no, no, no. None of that. Diesel. Supper is being made. He's over there looking at the food. Diesel, what you got? Chevy, enough. You don't need to yell at me. <laughs> but I got two apples too. In here. Only two because I have to eat them before I cross the border tomorrow. They don't let you cross the border with fruit. They're very serious about that. No fruit at the border. short visit it's almost like a tease I was only home for like an hour I stretched it to like an hour and 15 minutes and I'm running a little bit behind to meet Jerry at uh, the corner of the 12 and the 1 he's gonna be waiting there for me already so better get moving Britt was just in her PJs and pajamas and didn't want to be on camera but uh, it was nice to be able to just drop in even if it was just for an hour it's every minute is worth it right so now 
off to Kenora. Pick up some lumber tomorrow, bring that to Brainerd, Minnesota. And then we have a load of utility trailers booked out of Indiana. So a little bit of a longer deadhead, but uh, it's okay. That uh, It all works out in the end, so it'll work, it'll work well for me. They asked if I wanted to do it. I was like, sure, it's a good load. So down to Brainerd, down to uh, Indiana, pick up those trailers and back home. By the time you watch this, I may already be at home. I try to get these out as fast as possible. Let's carry on to Kenora. Paul in laws waiting. Just about to the border with Ontario. We're gonna go right to the customer and sleep there so we can be loaded first thing in the morning. been driving since 2006 and I've already seen huge improvements in Canada for truckers huge improvements whether it be wider roads twinning the highway like when I first started the highway through Saskatchewan all the way from the Manitoba border all the way past Whitewood was a two-lane highway <coughs> now it's a four-lane there was also no bypass around Regina I can still remember back, I'm pretty sure I can remember when the highway between Saskatoon and Edmonton was a two-lane. Nope, uh, just in the US as far as I know, but uh, the scale we're coming up to here is open. I can see the lights flashing. my pa-in-law Jerry behind me there talking on the CB he's asking if we have any drive wise scales in Canada let me know in the comments section if we do have drive wise scales those are the scales that allow us to bypass uh, scales in Canada don't go don't use the drive wise system I don't think though I might be wrong they might be used in southern Ontario But we can see the lights flashing up ahead there, scales open. An open scale, my least favorite kind of scale. Goody. Good supper. I think they'll be impressed.
I'm gonna need to get a new seat cover. Look at this. Used and abused. Yikes. Got a rip down there too. I bought these because they were heavy duty. Well, whoever makes these things, not uh, naming any names or anything, not gonna say their name, but whoever makes these things uh, has a different definition of heavy duty than I do. Buy different ones next time. So here we are, eating our night lunch, some cookies I got from my mother a long time ago. What are moms for, right? They give you cookies. They always want to feed you. My mom knows I like, I like sweet, sweet stuff. I have a sweet tooth. It's dangerous bringing those in the truck with me. I've actually had them at home for weeks already because I don't want to bring them in here because if I bring them in here, I eat them all. And it's true, I've had three already since we stopped here. I have to stop myself, but they're so good. I got to get rid of this. I just keep adding to it. I'm just putting my video together here now. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. A little bit of a shorter one. I'll be running convoy here with uh, Jerry, Paw in Law, for the rest of the week. Like I said, uh, tomorrow we're loading here. We're here at the customer in Kenora. We're going to load first thing in the morning, head down to Brainerd, hopefully get unloaded tomorrow, and then start heading down to uh, Indiana. Uh, I think it's northern Indiana. A little bit of a long deadhead. Okay, a lot of a long deadhead. I don't know. I'm not the most thrilled about it, but uh, it works out in the end for me. And they did ask me nicely if, if I wanted to. They have two loads out there because me and uh, Jerry, we want to we wanna run uh, Convoy, right? We, we need two loads at the same place at the same time. And it just worked out that there was two sitting there waiting. And we need to get them back up to Manitoba and there's no other drivers in the area. And they asked, hey, Josh, like, would, you, would you like to go pick this up? Like, Bit of a long dead head yeah i made the call yeah now let's do it because then uh i can help him uh across the border tomorrow into the u.s just to get familiar with that we can go uh load up these utility trailers that we're picking up again it's different than the last ones but these ones are in indiana and then we'll load them up bring them back home and then i can help them uh get through the border back into canada again and uh, with all the new things and uh the Canadian border is actually a little more strict now than the American border with certain things. And so I can uh, help them get familiar with that as well. And then that'll be the end of the week. And it'll be time to go home. And next week he'll be uh, flying solo, out on his own. Who knows where they'll send him. But I'm excited to have him here working with us. I'm excited that to have both dads here now doing the same thing as me, or maybe I'm doing the same thing as them. I don't know, my dad started it all. He, uh, he's he been here since, I think, 2008. 13 years? He's been here three years longer than me. And I've been here going on 11 years. So 11, 12, 13. 14? Oh, he's going on 14! How long ago was that then? I can't math right now. I don't want to. I can. I just choose not to. I'm not going to do math right now. I'm off duty. You figure it out. <laughs> I think he's on in his 14th year, almost 15 years here. Wow. Yeah, and uh, Paul-in-law Jerry, he's just starting out. It's a, it's a family business now, all running under the same name. I love it. Have a good night, everybody. I'm going to bed. Take care, and we'll see you tomorrow. Really happy with this purchase. Uh, the computer is working really well. I'm happy to report. Very often I buy these electronics and stuff and uh, I'm not happy with my purchase because I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm not an electronics guy. I know how to use them for my purposes. I don't know much about them though. I know which button buttons to push and when. And I can I can type pretty good too. I mean a lot of my businesses run online, right? I understand how to use the computers and I think I'm pretty good with them. Except when they break, then I'm a truck driver. That's when I turn into a, just a full-fledged truck driver. I have no idea, no idea. Bring someone to get fixed or you just go buy a new one. <laughs>
Uh, but yeah, it's working good. And uh, we'll see how it uh, goes in the future. Hopefully this one lasts a little longer. I got really good warranty on this one. Uh, I, I got top-notch warranty. So anything that happens to this thing and I'm covered, which is good. I think I got three years worth. Pat myself on the back. I think I did good. I don't know. I don't know. 